the work of the Public Accounts Committee. Uh, one is to do with the Irish Red Cross, which I'm going to take first. And the second report is the National Aquatic Centre. I'll give a brief overview of the reports um, or the, in, in, uh, the Irish Red Cross and then in the Aquatic Centre. And we'll take questions at the end of each report, uh, should there be any. Um, first of all, the Irish Red Cross. Uh, the Irish Red Cross is one of the best voluntary bodies which does a huge amount of good work throughout the country. And the outstanding work of volunteers in our community deserves special recognition. This is a week dedicated to the work of volunteers. I know that one of the few upsides in our session is that there has been a large flow of people back into voluntary work. In paying recognition to the work of volunteers in the Irish Red Cross, it is important that all steps are taken to protect the integrity and reputation of this body. Uh, sadly, in recent years, the image of the Red Cross has been tarnished as issues relating to corporate governance and financial con controls have come into the public domain. It is important, therefore, that the problems that have arisen uh, in the Irish Red Cross uh, are tackled and that a strategy is put in place to bring about uh, a new way of doing business. The Irish Red Cross is not directly accountable to the Public Accounts Committee. But most of its funding is raised through charitable, charitable donations. It does, however, get a state funding of over €800,000 per year uh, from the vote of the Department of Defence. And while there was no issue of this money not being used for the purposes it was intended, it was important that the Irish Red Cross demonstrate <laughs> that it is putting its house in order and that at that end, I'm glad that the new Director General of the Irish Red Cross and the Chairman, David O'Callaghan, came before the committee where they were challenged on what had gone wrong in the Irish Red Cross and more importantly what changes that they had brought about arising from that experience. As a committee we pursued issues highlighted in the CNAG's report on the Irish Red Cross and also had regard to concerns raised with us by those who wrote to us complaining about that body. One of the issues that was made forcefully in this correspondence was that the Red Cross was, com was controlled by a small group of people uh, who controlled the board for a number of years. While it was not on our mandate to tell any volunteer that they could not put themselves forward for election to executive board positions in the Irish Red Cross, we did want to pursue the issue of getting new blood into the running of that body as this was one way of enhancing corporate governance. We have made a specific recommendation that those who have served at least six years should set aside when new positions are being filled. A change has been made to the rules of the Red Cross in relation to continuous service, but at the moment it only applies to those appointed to the board in 2012. And what we wanted was that it should be made ret retrospective to cover continuous service. On the issue of financial controls, it is entirely wrong that funding collected in 2005 for the tsunami in Southeast Asia should have been retained in a branch account of the Red Cross in Tipperary until it was discovered in 2008. Even then, and this shows that this array at the Red Cross, it was treated as an administrative issue and not brought formally to the board of the Irish Red Cross until late in 2009. <coughs> We've got assurances that a situation like what happened in Tipperary could not happen, um, and the committee sees this as a positive step. We have called for regular audits of all branches, so the Red Cross is fully aware of the monies that are held in its name. We are also recommending in this report that the Department of Defence be given a right to intervene in the affairs of the Red Cross where such an intervention is required in the public interest. Finally, and it is an issue that impacts on all charities, the report deals with the way donations are handled by charities and the abilities of charities to use funds that may not equate with the intent of the donor. If a donation does not specify that the, purp the purpose of the donation, it goes into a separate unrestricted fund where the charity itself decides what the money is used for. Charities can also use designated funds where, for instance, the appeal is oversubscribed. There is an issue here of donor education and the report is specific on this and makes a recommendation that the charity is required to contact the donor where the donation is not being used for the purpose designated by the donor. I want to conclude by saying that our report has to some extent 
been superseded by the order that was signed by the Minister earlier this month, which changed the rules of the Irish Red Cross. However, this report, together with the public examination of this issue, is important in dealing with the weaknesses that existed at the Irish Red Cross, and I take heart from the fact that many of, of these issues are now being actively addressed. And that concludes our report on the Irish Red Cross. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, any of the committee members or I will take them.